And good afternoon, board members. And for the record, my name is Norma Camacho, CEO of the Santa Clara Valley Water District. And I want to start first with some introductions of uh, staff and guests that are going to be here with us today. Uh, first of all, I want to start off with our staff, Garth Hall, Deputy Operating Officer of Water Supply, Sydney Gao, Imported Water Unit Manager, Eric Sutherland, who is Assistant District Counsel, Darren Taylor, who is our CFO, and we want to welcome Grant Davis, Director of Department of Water Resources, and en route is Chuck Gardner, President of Hallmark Group Capital Program Management. So thank you, Grant, for coming today and making the time to spend with us. So I just want to start off uh, with a few comments. First of all, today we are asking the board to make a very, very important decision on the California water fix. The state has been working on the planning and permitting of the water fix for over a decade and now needs to know if its water contractors are willing to support the project before it invests in the next stage of planning and design. Now, because 40% of our water flows through the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta, it is important for us to evaluate that solutions halt the declining reliability of this important supply. The state's water fix plan proposes to efficiently move state and federal water supplies through the delta to significantly reduce the impacts of existing diversion facilities on endangered aquatic species. It also proposes to protect Santa Clara County's water supplies from the known risks of flood, earthquakes, and sea level rise. We have held over 60 meetings on delta planning efforts and our water supply master plan. And over the past few months, we have held meetings describing the impact of doing nothing and have presented the potential costs and benefits of participating in the water fix. So today, I am recommending that the board adopt a resolution expressing conditional support for the water fix. And in addition, we are asking the board to authorize my continued participation in the planning discussions and develop agreements to secure conditions needed for your support and financial participation. This recommendation is consistent with the board principles for the water fix that were presented before the board on March 14th this year. And those principles are broadcasted up on the screen for you to review. Now this slide projects the historic trend line, which demonstrates that continued impact on fish will lead to less water reliability in the future. Our imported water supplies will continue to decline from 170,000 acre feet today to 125,000 acre feet in 2040 if no action is taken. Our total demands are projected to grow from 360,000 acre feet in 2020 to over 400,000 acre feet in 2040. Our inability, inability to meet the future demand is detrimental to our ratepayers and the economy of Silicon Valley. The state's analysis shows that the water fix will protect supplies improve flow patterns, and decrease impacts on wildfire. And we concur with that analysis. The current state proposal consists of twin tunnels with a total flow capacity of 9,000 CFS, which is split 55% state water project and 45% Central Valley project. The costs and benefits of this project were analyzed by staff, and presented to you in September. We also compared the costs and benefits of the water fix to local and regional water supply projects. The water supply master plan analyzed our participation at our allocated share, which on the state side, as the slide indicates, is about 2.5% and 5% share on the federal side. Our total reliability need is at least 41,000 acre feet. By participating, we can better control 
overall water rates at affordable levels as well as improve water quality, which protects our groundwater basins. Now this slide shows the amount of state and federal water supply deliveries we receive today, which is about 170,000 acre feet. If nothing is done, our models predict a significant combined decrease of 39,000 acre feet in our state water project and Central Valley project supplies. Modeling indicates that the water fix has the potential on the right hand of the slide to recover about 28,500 to 44,300 acre feet of this lost water. Through an upgrade of currently aging infrastructure, the water fix is also expected to protect our total water supply of 170,000 acre feet from the risks of earthquake and sea level rise. The total capital cost of the water fix as configured today is $16.7 billion. O&M costs are projected to be $64.6 .6 million per year. Depending on our level of participation, which may range from 2.5% to 4% of the total project, our share of capital costs may range from $420 to $650 million with O&M costs ranging from 1.6 to $2.5 million per year. On September 19th, we presented this comparison of water supply options to the board. A variety of water supply options were evaluated and these projects were compared on average annual yield, life cycle cost, unit cost, and monthly water cost per average household in fiscal year 43. For the greatest average annual yield, the water fix produced one of the lowest units costs at $600 per acre feet. It is one of the less expensive supply options. Although the costs and benefits of the project are promising, we have concerns with the Central Valley Project participation approach. The Bureau of Reclamation has not committed to the project. There are unresolved questions regarding cost allocations and not enough assurance that participants on the federal side will receive benefits. Westlands Water Districts, the largest CVP contractor, decided on April 19th not to participate in the project as currently defined. And the federal participation approach as currently presented is inconsistent with board principles regarding protecting the value of the district's imported supplies, meeting the county's water supply and reliability needs, and allocation of costs based on benefits. Despite this, the state water project contractors are moving ahead to make a determination regarding the current project. So far, 11 of the 24 state water project contractors south of the Delta who would benefit from the water fix have expressed support for the project. After the state has received responses on project interest and has a sense of the number of contractors participating and the level of potential funding commitment, the state will then determine how best to move forward with the project. At that point, we will have an opportunity to review and consider the state's decision. Although we are asking the board to consider supporting this project at the current level of participation in the state water project, we also recommend our participation be conditioned upon the ability of the water fix to provide additional supply opportunities to ensure against future uncertainties. And the water fix must have the ability to protect both our state water project and Central Valley project supplies. And the cost per acre feet of any modified project remains similar to current estimates. We are working currently with the state and the Bureau of Reclamation to develop alternative approaches to protect our Central Valley project supplies since no other CVP contractors have participated to date.
For our next steps, we're going to be continuing to work with the state, the Bureau of Reclamation and Water Agencies to monitor how the project evolves. We will continue to work on applicable agreements which align with the board's decision today, and we will bring updates and further recommendations to this board. As indicated on the slide, we have held more than 60 meetings on Delta planning efforts and our water supply master plan. We are currently planning a meeting in mid-November to provide an update to the board. And if the board concurs with the staff recommendation, we do plan to schedule a board meeting on December 19th to adopt CEQA findings and seek authorization to execute agreements relating to participation in the project. In summary, I'm recommending support of the California Water Fix, and I'm requesting authorization to continue participation and develop the agreements necessary to move forward with the project. But before we pause for a discussion, I would like to bring up Grant Davis, Director of the Department of Water Resources, to provide his perspectives on the project. Well, good afternoon, members of the board and members of the public. Uh, sorry for being a tight bit late. I actually came in from Folsom Reservoir, which is celebrating the completion of the main spillway to make it through what was largely the largest uh, wettest winter on record in Northern California, as we all know. You yourselves experienced the results of some of that weather, and we're hard at work uh, determining how best the state can work with locals particularly in the Bay Area, to lead the way on understanding the extreme weather events that we encounter. First, before jumping in, I want to um, acknowledge my colleague Norma, who I've worked with now for many years, and the brilliance that your board exhibited by making her your permanent GM. She's the right person at the right time, very steady, very thoughtful, very deliberative, and someone that we look to for guidance and direction at the state level. So congratulations on a wonderful hire. Great minds think alike. Yes, indeed. This is not to diminish your prior GMs and assistant GMs. I also worked with them, and they were also wonderful staff. But Norma has reset the bar and someone I look to for, uh, for guidance and how we're going to proceed on upgrading California's water infrastructure in the, uh, for the 21st century. Norma went through and put together a wonderful uh, staff report to help guide you in your thinking. And um, I think I have a fresh perspective since I'm relatively new. I've come out of the Sonoma County Water Agency. I'm literally less than three months on the job. So if I had to characterize this, my perspective is somewhat still from a local government point of view. And I think that should be reassuring because my history in the Bay Area has been working hand in glove with Santa Clara Valley Water District. In fact, one of the last times I was here, you were celebrating the achievement of being ISO certified, which is a very rigorous process to achieve. We ultimately decided at Sonoma County we couldn't live up to what Santa Clara Valley had actually done, and it pained me to actually recognize that. But it was the truth. Uh, it didn't work for our organization as a wholesaler. We were doing sanitation and flood control, water supply. And I share that story just because it shows you the commitment that Santa Clara Valley Water District has to sustainability. And I suspect that that's part of what's on your mind here. Um, so coming in from Sonoma County Water Agency, uh, I was able to see firsthand what the governor and the Secretary of Resources, John Laird, had put in place. Um, my colleagues uh, up at the state are the most dedicated professionals I've ever worked with, and I'm here to let you know that because they have impeccable credentials. I just got off the phone with Chuck Bonham, the director of the Department of Fish and Wildlife, who is well known to folks in the environmental community as a stalwart who will do no harm to the Bay Delta. I'd like to think that I fit that same category. I spent many, many years working to provide the science that would be necessary to inform our decision-making process when we're deliberating the future of California's water supply. So acknowledging Norma and all the staff at the, the, the Santa Clara Valley Water District, 
I feel compelled to acknowledge Chuck Gardner as well, who will be on my left sitting down. Chuck was the person I would say most responsible for cutting costs and managing this process, which has recently been identified as one of the most complex and comprehensive processes in California history. It certainly is for the, the environmental documents that were produced. And I'm prepared to answer any questions and talk about a recent state audit that was uh, produced by Elaine and the, and the state auditor. Largely, the outcomes were not unexpected. They confirmed that we didn't use any general fund to move this project to this point. And perhaps most importantly, they confirmed how complex and challenging it is to manage water supply in the 21st century with the best available tools and the expense that's involved. So I look at this as a um, very necessary step to be able to confidently deliver water supply for the 25 million people that rely on the Bay Delta for their water supply. And yours is certainly one of those districts that relies on a substantial amount. You happen to be in a unique position that you have state supplies from our water project, the Department of Water Resources State Water Project, as well as a CVP contractor on the federal side. In some ways, I would say that you as board members have led the ability to invest in regional sustainability as much as possible to reduce your dependency on the Bay Delta system itself, which is a very wise move. That is something I intend to make sure, along with the governor and secretary of resources, that that message gets through the entire state. We must begin and maintain the investments in those strategies that are effective, efficient, and cost effective. So obviously, you're well known for the water efficiency targets that you made through the drought. I'm very grateful for that. I was right there with you. I feel that we would have done so without extraordinary pressure from the state, but nevertheless, we did get quite a bit of uh, pressure by the governor and his staff to make sure that water districts were doing all that they could to use water efficiently, and that cannot stop. That has to be our number one priority. When it comes to this particular decision today, and I think it's historic, I really do. I look out at this audience and I'm thinking of the community that relies upon this wonderful Bay Delta. It literally is the heart and soul of our water supply for California. And if I have to make an analogy, the analogy I would use is that we have an aging heart and we need to assess its condition. We need to have the surgeons that are most informed about how it functions or doesn't function. And we're probably looking at what type of stint is required to repair the damage that we've already occurred. And I say that with all sincerity. That analogy actually works. The Delta is the heart of the water supply system for 25 million people in California. And we must upgrade that system. Today, you are on the tail end of a series of votes that have taken place all month long and at the end of last month, starting with Zone 7, moving down into the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, and then ending with uh, zone with, with uh, Kern County, and now here. There have been others. I'll acknowledge, as Norma did, that the Westlands Water District has made a determination that this is not a project that they can support at this time. But if you look at what's left, you have a coalition of interests that you are working in concert with the state water projects, and those contractors have resoundedly said, you must go forward. This is not a time to delay. We can no longer afford to say that the status quo is acceptable. It's not. And I'm going to end by, by suggesting that you look at an article. I don't remember which paper, but the, the author was Dr. Peter Moyle. Dr. Peter Moyle is a well-respected biologist emeritus from the University of California at Davis. He's devoted his entire career to the livelihood of Delta smelt. He knows more by, by far than anyone I know. And within the last month or two, Dr. Moyle published his opinion about the current state of affairs in the Delta and California water. And that article I use as my moral compass because I look at the science. What does the Bay Delta need to be able to become restored and continue to provide the services that it does for you and Point South, as well as all the rest of California. Dr. Moyle concluded after all the options that you could look at that the California water fix in some form 
was the necessary step that California needed to take at this time. And he concluded that because the Delta smelt are absolutely on life support. They are not going to make it under the current situation. The way that we manage water in the Delta, the type of back water channels that, and, and the reverse flows, the scale and the size and, and the instability of the Delta that we rely on is no longer sustainable. And I can go on and on, but I won't. I'll spare you because you have a long day ahead of you. But I will sit at that table. I will listen, just as you will, to your folks and constituents that have come out to weigh in. And I respect everyone's opinion on this. This is not an easy black or white decision. This is one that has required deliberations. I know you as board members have taken due deliberation because Norman has been on every call over the last, how long has it been? I can't even remember weighing in on behalf, and her staff, on behalf of Santa Clara Valley and your board's opinion. We've heard it. And we are tailoring this project to meet the coalition of folks that want in. So I will be here. I don't want to go on, but I'm here to pledge my point of view and my new job as the Director of the Department of Water Resources on behalf of the Governor and Secretary Laird. I know you have been hard at work considering what to do today. I think it's an historic day, and I truly believe with the votes in support of the water fix, that we have a lot of work to do. And I will be charged, along with the Department of Water Resources and many of you, in how we build and construct the project that is ultimately built. More importantly, how it's properly managed and operated. That will be literally a decade from now, which means all of those investments you've made in groundwater, in pure water, in recycled water, in efficiencies, need to continue. It's an all-of-the-above strategy. And I say that with all sincerity. You have been leaders in the Bay Area. I commend you. You're all leaders. And you've demonstrated that. And I'd ask you to do it again today. And I'll be here for any other questions. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. That you've, that you've taken to come in to speak to the board and to our constituents. I appreciate you being here. We have additional, okay. So at this time, it's Barbara Keegan's turn. <laughs> sure. For um, Mr. Mr. Davis, um, thank you very much for coming here today. Um, you actually have a very interesting background for someone who's um, leading the Department of Water Resources. Um, I see that you graduated from UC Berkeley with a degree in political science. And as you mentioned, um, you had worked for the Sonoma um, County Water Agency. Um, but you're an environmentalist by background, and you spent about 10 years um, with the environmental organization um, as the executive director of the Bay Institute. So clearly, you have very deep roots in Northern California, and you have very deep roots um, within the environmental community. Could you just describe um, a, a little bit uh, how your background will help inform your decision-making process um, if the water fix were to move forward? And I, I think in particular, one of my interests are um, how, you know, given um, that the water coming from, from the Delta serves not just Northern California, but Southern California as well, kind of... Um, your thoughts in terms of the protection of the existing um, Delta system. So if there's anything you could share with us, I'd appreciate that. Well, well thank you, Barbara. Um, I really don't want to make this about my background and uh, my point of view, but you've asked, and I hope that I can state my opinion and then move on into deliberations. But I appreciate the question because I think a lot of people asked how in the world did uh, Director Davis end up here after 10 years at running a wholesale water district, much like yours, Sonoma County Water Agency? But it is, in fact, that experience that prepared me to work with the engineers and to look at the water system and what's possible. Um, one of my proudest moments was the fact that the Sonoma County Water Agency was able to become carbon-free by 2015. That meant that we took advantage of state legislation that let us create an enterprise and handed it off to the County of Sonoma through the Sonoma Clean Power. But essentially all of our water then, the electrical system, was renewable energy. It's those types of investments that I can see 
that help us look at a broader, more integrated view on, on California water. My prior work for over a decade as the executive director of the Bay Institute certainly uh, was a difficult job. It was difficult primarily because we were the voice and many times the, the, the voice with hydrology, biology, hydrogeomorphology, the science basically, uh, to be able to inform the environmental community about what the system actually needs and what the limits are of the system. So I have a very strong background in ecosystem services. I feel that that's par probably why I can stay here today, that the heart of the Bay Delta uh, is no longer functioning the way it needs to. If we're going to rely on that, then we need to upgrade that heart, and we're going to probably have to do some corrective surgery, which is what I actually think the California water fix is. The uh, Director Moyle, as I mentioned earlier, um, and my staff, for over a decade and continually today as the Bay Institute, are weighing in to help inform decision making by bringing science and technology and the systems to the equation. And they, they do that very well, as amongst other environmental NGOs. There's a number of them, in fact. The Bay Area is probably chock full of my former colleagues. And I will not change my point of view based off what position I have. I think I've earned the right to say that the system needs to be fixed that the species that depend on the Bay Delta are in jeopardy, that we as water managers cannot shirk our responsibility and ignore the fact that the system's in decline, and that there's been an extraordinary amount of work and energy put forward by this administration, in particular Governor Brown and Secretary John Laird. They have dedicated themselves to deliver this opportunity for the state water contractors, you being one, to make the decision to join in or not on this particular Cal Water fix. And as I said, Dr. Moyle, no one less than Dr. Moyle, who's dedicated his life to protecting Delta Smelt, has concluded that this path that's essentially outlined in your staff report is the best of all the available options right now. So that's about the best way I can answer that. And thank you for the question. Thank you for your response. Thank you, Mr. Davis, again. Director Estamara? Hey, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. I just wasn't sure if I should ask uh, Mr. Davis or Mr. Gardner about the audit. Should I ask you about the audit? Should I wait for Depends on what the question is, probably. Ah, well, I'm sure you know what it is. You know, we're all concerned about costs. And one of the things that um, out of our 60 or 70 meetings, uh, one of the big issues that have been raised is whether we... Uh, whether we have the right estimate, how close are we to the right estimate? Um, people have expressed uh, in, in many meetings that we've had um, that that the state, and of course they blame us the same way, you know, that we're always uh, underestimating costs. In this particular case, we've got a 30% overrun built in. Uh, and so when we talk about $16 billion or $17 billion, that it already has... Uh, some some overreached in or already baked in, um, and so my concern was that that um, this is part of what the audit found that that uh, despite uh, having already baked in uh, some some overage, that um, the the estimates were, um, were pretty pretty um, I guess underestimated. And I felt the public ought to, ought to get, get yeah, your, uh, your perspective on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll start at the beginning of that. Um, you're talking about the planning process, yeah. uh, which, as, as you guys know, you've done lots of projects, and it's very difficult to predict uh, what the planning, ultimate end game for the planning process will be uh, as that project has moved along. Uh, if, I don't think anybody ever intended for the original budget to be the budget. If you go back and review some of the early agreements, it uh, contemplated that the original budget was the beginning uh, to try to understand what the full project would look like. Uh, as you know, the project has morphed many times. It started off as an HCP. That's sort of the big shift in the project and ultimately became a Section 7 process. Uh, we've added... Uh, 
I think we're up to somewhere around 14 different alternatives that have been analyzed uh, for the project. Uh, I think that just shows the, and, and the audit I think reflects that. It shows the, the amount of diligence that the state went through to uh, engage all the stakeholders, consider all the good thinking that was out there with respect to the project, and not just consider it, but also go in and perform the analysis. So I think it was, uh, it was a good start, the original budget, but I don't think that that was the intent when the original MOUs were signed. Uh, by the water agencies to support this project, that that was going to be the final budget. Well, if, if, and then, I, I mean, you guys, we, if you want to talk about the, the cost estimate, we, we can talk about that. I mean, you guys were here, we did the presentation and the level of diligence that we've done on the cost estimate, which really when you think about in terms of planning versus engineering, uh, engineering is a lot more defined process. It's a lot more black and white. Uh, you, you know what you're going to build, you have your designs, it's approved, the project is permitted. Uh, with respect to the planning process, uh, you know, there's always another study that can be done. There's always another request by one of the regulating agencies to try to get as much certainty as they can uh, about permitting the project. Uh, but I think there are two different animals, planning uh, and design and construction. If I can add just a bit to that. Um, I mentioned earlier that the audit that had been uh, produced and recently finalized, the primary purpose for that audit was to determine whether the Department of Water Resources had used any general fund money to produce that. And the primary finding often gets overlooked that we had not. So that's the good news. The other news about that audit is it confirmed just how complex and complicated and really what a challenge it is to actually take on something this vast, this large, and be able to walk through the permitting process, the environmental review process, to get the type of uh, point that we are today. Uh, this fellow deserves a medal, actually, because he sat through, normal, I can't even tell you how many hours, of absolute stakeholder involvement. It was a marvel. It's, uh, when I look at this, this has been vetted and vetted and revetted. And it's part of what contributed to the cost, actually. The fact that we had to look forward and not know what the alternative was going to be that was selected. So essentially, you have 15 different projects that you've taken through the permitting, environmental review, and planning process to be able to make decision makers have a choice of what we're going to build. So the third point I'll make is that everyone has the right to critique. And I absolutely support that right. And I'm, I'm a harsh critic myself and have been and will continue to be. But in this particular case, we are not yet able to hand to you the exact equation because the process that you're concluding today was necessary to do that. And that's what the audit actually revealed, that we are intending to put together, again, a suite of choices that will be made, depending on the outcome of your vote today. Right after that, we'll be meeting, as Norma was alluding to, looking at what it is that's actually going to be constructed and what the cost estimates actually look like. And I could not agree with you more. I just came off of Folsom Dam with the head of Kiwit, who's building Oroville, okay? He's up at Oroville right now. Had you not been voting today, I'd be with him right now. And I must say that I am all about Oroville, Oroville, Oroville. I have to every time because that's my top priority. I am not the lead on water fix. The governor has staff that have brought this here. I'm a co-pilot. I'm here to bring down the, 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 uh, the wheels and make sure the seat buckles are, are fastened and we're going to land on the right runway. So I will tell you that, and Chuck knows this. But if no one other than uh, the head of Kiwit had to tell us that we uh, are poised to look at the connectivity of this entire system, it's not isolated. It's not something that we can tell you one piece is yours and one is another. It's all connected. So all Californians should be a part of this solution. And again, once that's determined who's in, we will begin delivering exactly what the costs are going to be. And what Bruce said from Kiwit, he said to me, all these large projects tend to overrun. And there's reasons for that, and you better understand them. And I'll pledge to you right now that if I'm involved in helping to design and ultimately build and construct this project, it will be done right. And we'll do everything we can to build in the protections so that board members like you have the assurances you need to know that we're going to do this as close to on budget and on time as possible. Just for the record, Folsom Dam, that spillway, was done on budget and four years early. It can be done when we coordinate. Thank you. 
Any other directors have any questions? Okay, it's the public's turn. Again, I'm going to repeat our procedure. So I have over 30 speakers. The list has grown since we first started. So I'm going to ask you to allow, we're going to allow you two minutes to speak. And if any of you are here representing uh, an organization and you have multiple speakers on the issue, please select one speaker on your behalf so we can expedite this process so that you could get to what you're here for is to get to the decision and the discussion amongst the board. Okay? So let's, let's begin on item 2.5. The first speaker on this is Roberta Holman, representing the Council of the League of Women Voters of Santa Clara County. I'm going to ask you to line up behind her. Would be next speaker would be Mike Milkey, Samuel Muniz, Alex Sanfilippo. Please line up so we can expedite this process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good you. afternoon, board members, staff. I'm Roberta Holloman. I'm the chair of the Council of the Leagues of Women Voters of Santa Clara County. Today I'm representing the five leagues in Santa Clara County. The league opposes the twin tunnels and water fix project for the following reasons. Rather than build more large infrastructure, there are better options to address California's water needs, such as water conservation, wastewater reclamation, stormwater capture. These are long-standing solutions supported by the League. Santa Clara Valley has innovative capacity to develop these options, and, then, and they would create local jobs and give regions control of their own water future. 20th century engineering projects like WaterFix cannot protect Santa Clara Valley water supplies. We need to turn instead to 21st century innovation, which the Santa Clara Valley excels and on which California's water future depends. The League of Women Voters urges you not to adopt the resolution um, uh, uh, expressing conditional support for the water fix project. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Solomon. appreciate that. Next speaker is Mike Milkey from Silicon Valley Leadership Group. Good afternoon, Chair Varela, Vice Chair Santos, and District Directors. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, my name is Mike Milkey. <coughs> I'm Senior Vice President with the Silicon Valley Leadership Group. Our 375 member companies collectively provide nearly one of every three private sector jobs in the Valley and contribute more than $3 trillion to the world economy. As I believe you know, we have long been supportive of the California Water Fix. This is, our state is the sixth largest economy in the world, and Silicon Valley is a primary driver of our state's job creation and growth. That our success, the envy of much of the world, is at stake unless we move to protect our water supply. Forty percent of our region's water is imported through the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. This water travels through as much as 100-year-old dirt levees that are vulnerable to collapse during an earthquake. This means our fresh water supply is at risk at any moment. I'm here today to ask for your vote in support of WaterFix. While we support investing in local water supply projects, we believe the Delta will continue for quite some time to be an important source of water for our region. It's among the most affordable sources up to two to four times cheaper than other fresh water supplies. Rejecting this project will be a perpetuation of the status quo that's failing the system as we've heard today. Water Fix, we believe, provides a solution, in fact, the only viable and detailed solution to address these risks and shore, our, shore up our water supply. It's gone through over a decade of planning and review and it's supported by over 70% of residents in Santa Clara County. We cannot afford to put off addressing this issue any longer. We appreciate that the board is looking at a smaller project, which may work out in the long run. However, building one tunnel does not necessarily mean we can expect to cut project costs in half. We need to keep every option open, including two tunnels, and to have a seat at the table to help shape the project moving forward. We cannot afford to be shut out. Thank you, On Mr. behalf Milky, of the innovation economy, I urge you all to support WaterFix today. Next speaker is Mr. Samuel Muniz. 
represents Carpenter's Local 405. Good afternoon. My name is Samuel Munoz. And I'm thank you for allowing me to speak today in support of California water fix. I am a representative of Carpenter's Local 405 that is located in San Jose, which represents over 4,000 members. Throughout Northern California, we represent over 33,000 members, many of whom live and work in Santa Clara counties. Our members work in construction-related projects that range from high-density residential, commercial, hospitals, infrastructure projects, heavy highway. We do a lot of the projects for the state. We ask you to support the governor's California water fix. Calif uh, carpenters in Northern California and here in Santa Clara County always are always excited for projects like California water fix that find smart solutions for our state's water problem. California water fix will be a functioning water delivery system that can withstand the impacts of climate change and natural disasters such as earthquakes. This is this is critical to business growth and job creation. We urge you support California Water, water Fix. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Munoz. Next speaker I have is Alex Sanfilippo, followed by Reverend Seth Moore, followed by Kendra Schultz, followed by Becky Donnelly. Please line up behind the podium, please. Mr. Sanfilippo. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and Board Directors. My name is Alex Sanfilippo. I'm here to urge you to vote yes on California Water Fix. As previously stated, uh, Valley receives 40% of our water from the San Joaquin Delta. And as it stands, the current infrastructure is at risk of um, collapse due to earthquakes as well as saltwater intrusion. Just two weeks ago, we had a 4.1 earthquake in Elm Rock, so the risk is very real. Water Fix also will rectify the issues we have with uh, the Chinook salmon runs as well as the Delta smelt. As we know, the southern pelps uh, cause backward flow to the river, which causes the salmon to sw uh, swim right into them. The new uh, water fix will have new and improved fish screens, which will also be using uh, gravity to divert water from the northern uh, Sacramento River down to the south. In regards to the cost, the average water fix cost some estimates put it at 840 per acre foot, whereas by comparison, the San, uh, San, San Diego Pier Water Project costs 1975 to 2375 per acre foot. So on average, in addition to the cost that comes when, uh, from over-extracting groundwater and of the, um, the issues with land subsidence, this cost definitely weighs in favor of water fix. I urge you to vote yes, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Sanfilippo. Next speaker is Reverend... Jeff Three Moore, hope I pronounced that correct. This is Reverend Jethro Moore. I'm Thank president you. of the San Jose Silicon Valley NAACP. And I advocate on behalf of a thousand of Santa Clara Valley residents who provide jobs and education and look for a safe environment for everyone. I am not a water supply expert, but as members of the community, we understand the value that a reliable and good water supply provides all of our communities. I also understand the significance of your decision to participate today and propose improvements to the Santa Clara, to the San Joaquin Delta from the Governor Brown's water fix. I totally support, and the constituents that I represent totally support you signing off on this bill. In California 2012, human rights to water law provides the best framework, clearly stating that every human being has the right to safe, clean, affordable, and accessible water adequate for human consumption, cooking, and sanitary purposes. We support this law, and we hold the Santa Clara Valley Water District will continue. This decision will test your resolve and commitment to keep the promise. That test is particularly meaningful given the temptation by some to pursue local efforts. In our opinion, ignoring the fact that clean water from the Bay Delta is the foundation for keeping water affordable. The cost of alternative local resources exclusively will certainly be higher. So we're asking you to stand and continue to protect us as you've done through the droughts, as you've done through the earthquakes, as you've done through the ups and downs of our economy. The Santa Clara Valley Water District has always stood for this community and has stood for the people. And as we move into the 21st century, a 21st century infrastructure built 
with modern supply water from the Delta using the Twin Tunnels is essential to the salvation and the survival of Santa Clara County to keep water affordable. We need you to stand up for the people of this valley for today and for tomorrow. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, Kendra Schultz, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yes, you did. Thank you. Um, board, thank you for having me here today. My name is Kendra Schultz, and along with my colleague, Mike Milkey, I'm here to represent the Silicon Valley Leadership Group. Uh, we represent over 375 member companies in the Silicon Valley. The Leadership Group is a long-standing supporter of the California Water Fix Project. As it stands, 40% of our region's water supply is threatened by aging infrastructure, natural disasters, sea level rise, and environmental degradation. Just this winter, the valley faced record flooding, and the state is still recovering from five years of record drought. Additionally, an earthquake or sea level rise caused by climate change could easily collapse the 50-year-old Delta levee system. As severe weather continues to imperil our state, it is imperative that we are proactive in addressing the aging Delta infrastructure we rely on to secure water for the Silicon Valley region. California Water Fix is the only plan that adequately protects the Santa Clara County water supply from these risks, while also making it possible to capture and store more water when it becomes available. Governor Brown's Water Fix has been thoroughly vetted. It has undergone eight years of planning, design, regulatory review, and public input. According to recent polling, it is now supported by 70% of Santa Clara County residents. Many water districts across the state have voted in support of water fix, including local Zone 7 water district in Alameda. Most recently, the large Metropolitan Water District voted to endorse the project, pledging $4.3 billion in funding, 26% of the total share of financing. While the Agricultural Westlands Water District voted no on the plan, we maintain that water fix remains the only practical and economically viable plan to protect the region's water supply. A user-based financing plan ensures that we only pay for the water that we receive. Additionally, we would like to highlight that water fix is much more beneficial to the Delta environment and native species than the status quo. When it comes to the future of California's water supply, the business-as-usual route is not an option. Thank you, Ms. Schultz. Thank you Appreciate for your time your today. Next speaker I have is Becky Donnelly, followed by Bill Donnelly. Can you... You both have the same statement. Can we just have one well, of you Well, I doubt that we do. I'm, I'm fine. Um, okay, Chris, and then there's Chris Donnelly. I've got three. Yeah, it, uh, I'm coming from listening to what you've been saying. I'm just kind of going off the top here. Uh, we've had All property... Right, I have Edgar Donnelly, I believe, after that. Please. Okay, we've had property on Bethel Island, which right. is on okay. the Delta. And we also live in, in, in Sunnyvale. And we have a unique perspective since we've lived there. Uh, there's a lot of people that live on Bethel and Delta areas that are very poor, and we have very rich people. I mean, you can get a house. Yeah, and when I'm talking about Bethel Island, you have to take this and look at all that Stockton areas, all the levees behind uh, Sacramento, uh, all those areas. So this is just, but I'm just talking about this small area so you can kind of get an idea. The, all the houses, almost all the houses out there are on the water. That's the benefit. And the houses start, you know, with like some pipe for about $200,000, some up to a million. Uh, the thing of it is there is that all of the water that we get is from well water. California makes us test the wells. So we have them on record. If we get a lot of salinity there, and that is something that we, you know, have to be concerned about. What are you going to do? Have you put money away? to take care of that because without water, our property will be useless. We also, there are people have agricultural rights from 1901 that you're gonna to have to deal with because people out there have cattle, horses, things that they get from the water. If you have a salinity issue, how are you gonna deal with that? Because they make a lot of money off of their cattle or, or if they have horse ranches and you can go into uh, Brentwood, Oakley area, Knightson. So you better, there are other costs that are going to be effective. And also, people own the water on the Delta. I don't know if you realize that. Where we have boat docks, we own that water. There was a lawsuit, and you can look it up by Stone Road. And so all the people, if you have engines in there, big boats, and the engines get corroded by salt water, do you have the money set aside for all these possible 
problems. And I think you should actually have some people up here from the Delta that actually live on there. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Donnelly. I appreciate your comments. Bill Donnelly. Thank you for a moment. You forgot it's 2017. The wife speaks for the wife. The husband speaks for the husband. Oh. I appreciate the fact that, uh, and, and I should say my background is accounting and finance. I'm a retired professor of accounting and finance at San Jose State. I'm a practicing CPA. I appreciate the board members' uh, questions about the costs. I think that is the biggest problem with this uh, water fix. Uh, the cost of litigation, it's absolutely impossible to predict what those costs are going to be. A lot of people here, because they want jobs, jobs that help this area, I think, are fantastic. Why not hire these people to build your own dam so that you have control over it? You're not going to have control over this project, and that is going to be the biggest downfall to the water fix. Uh, participate with expanding Los Vaqueros. There's a lot of things you can do. This water fix is not one you want to do. I heard today these major tunnels are going to improve the environment. Does anyone truly believe that sucking out more water from the Delta is going to improve the environment? I heard from your CEO that the Delta of water is not reliable. I agree. You need to cut down your dependence on it. And I happen to attend the board meeting that you referenced where you looked at the current needs of the water and the projections, and I saw no relationship between those two numbers. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think several of you board members also noted that fact that there seemed to be a disconnect between current use and projected use. And I'm going to run out of time, but let me close with this. There are all kinds of rumors about secret meetings with the governor, promises of political futures, let me assure you, when this tunnel project falls apart, when the cost is absolutely out of control, anyone that supported this project won't have to worry about their political future because it will be finished. Thank you, Mr. Donnelly. Ms. Donnelly? Hi, I'm no uh, stranger to here. I've been here a few times. And I'm just going to briefly touch on a few of my concerns, as I know that you've already heard them before, and I know you're already considering them, but I just want to bring it up again. Which is, uh, first of all, what will be the effects and costs on people's rights to the Delta and also the lawsuits and settlement costs arising from this? They're going to be huge. I have no idea what the estimates are. I brought it up before to the board, and I've always gotten, we don't know, we haven't thought about it. Also, how will the housing prices be affected in the Delta? Let's face it, Discovery Bay, expensive houses, lousy water, can't bring out your speedboats. They are going to go right to the tank. Also, you need to be concerned about water quality for people in and around the Delta. you got to think about how their groundwater is going to be affected, and also wells. It's a very serious problem. Also, I've also heard things about Stockton might have water quality problems. Then also, I also heard that there's a lack of study for the climate changes. That really needs to be looked into, really needs to be investigated before you even go for this. And also another thing I found of concern is that the experts and also some of today's speakers were saying it was among some of the cheapest, the Delta California water fix. But one of your speakers here just said, vote, and then we'll tell you what the cost is. That's unacceptable to me. If you're going to go into a deal, you need to know how much it's going to cost. Also, I read in the Mercury uh, News article that key vote on Jerry Brown's $17 billion Delta Tunnel Project on Tuesday in San Jose, where it states that two of our board members attended a media earlier this month with the governor, and, it was, and I take this quote from the article, it says, participants said Brown applied pressure. I asked each one of you, why would he feel the need to do that unless he knew that there was substantial need for substantial improvements in this project? And then on a personal note, I love the Delta. I've been going up there since I've been nine. I lived up there for almost a year. I love it. It's beautiful, and I hope one day to go back there. And I urge and beg each one of you to vote now, and please keep this Delta as gorgeous as it is today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Donnelly. Appreciate that. Next speaker I have is Edgar Dimely, followed by Jeff Smith, followed by Connor Everts, followed by P Peter Jones. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Members, as you mentioned, my name is Edgar G. Dimely. I'm here representing the African American Water Leadership Coalition. We formed a coalition a few years ago basically to add another voice to California's uh, water chorus, uh, principally because water issues in the African American community aren't always foremost, and we thought it was important to engage them on a number of issues, uh, including water supply, water reliability, water quality. 
Uh, our members have been engaged in a number of issues, principally at uh, our insistence, and we thought it was important to come today to voice our support for this. We know this is not a difficult uh, or an easy decision uh, for your board, but what we thought was important that you hear from other uh, groups on this, uh, we believe that investment in the nation's infrastructure is easily the best investment that, that we can make. Uh, again, as, as, uh, I, won't re I won't go over all of the issues uh, that were talked about today other than to mention that we support uh, staff's recommendation. We urge your board to support this measure. One other issue that we'd like to drive home is that we want to make sure that if this moves forward that all uh, elements of our uh, state uh, enjoy in the benefits, issues of contracting, employment, continue so that a next generation of Californians can enjoy the same benefits that we did and our uh, our parents did. And again, uh, we commend your board on a number of issues, uh, water recycling, your decision to fluoridate your water supply, and your continued support for good public policy. Uh, we commend you on this uh, process and we thank you for your uh, continued commitment on this and we urge your support. Thank you, very Thank you, Mr. Daimler. I appreciate your comments. Next speaker is Jeff Smith. <coughs> Members of the board, my name is Jeff Smith, and uh, it makes me feel good to be making a brief uh, return visit to the district after more than 25 years of retirement. Nice to see you, Nye. I'm here today to voice my strong objections to your making a, a, any further contributions to the Twin Tunnels project. I do not want another dime of my tax dollars or yours or any of your constituents to be spent by the district on this fiasco so that our neighbors down south can have more water to waste. It's a known fact that when water has been scarce because of drought conditions, they have ignored this and excessively watered their luxurious lawns, let water run down the drain from free running hoses to wash their expensive automobiles. They simply didn't care about conserving this precious commodity, so let's not add to their receiving more of it. When you take your vote later this afternoon, I implore you, no, I beg you, to vote no on the construction of those tunnels, like other responsible water agencies here in our great state. Mrs. Eshoo has courageously made her decision to vote against it, and I hope, <coughs> excuse me, I hope each of you have the courage to also vote against it. Do you? Thank you very much for this time. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Appreciate your comments. Next speaker I have is Connor Everts. Thank you very much. Connor Everts representing the Southern California Watershed Alliance and the Environmental Water Caucus. Statewide organizations oppose the so-called California water fix. I've heard a lot of talking points today, but I'd like to be clear about a couple of things. One, the human right to water, which I've worked with with an organization I helped found called the Environmental Justice Coalition for Water, applies to those without access to clean, safe, and affordable water. This will not resolve those problems. In terms of rates, there's been some talk about the good things that uh, I give credit for agencies doing is moving beyond dumping wastewater treated and embedded with energy into the ocean and rivers and streams. 2.7 million acre feet was the amount at one time that is dumped into the Southern California bite of treated wastewater. We're trying to turn that around. Southern California, Orange County is an excellent example of that. We've also, despite people's images of us, have done conservation with community-based organization, which has allowed 1.4 million more people and kept water demand flat and then down about 19% now. We've seen what the state can do when water conservation is mandatory. We should be planning for that driest day um, with fire and not planning for ever more water and ever more demand. This is your opportunity to make a statement. I was at MET a week ago. A few directors stood up 
and uh, said, what are we going to do in the interim in the next 17 years at least that it will take to build this project and litigate it? And what we'll do is what we've always done, is create efficiencies and provide multiple benefits with local water, which also provides many more jobs over the long term. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Everts. Appreciate your comments. Next speaker is Pedro Jones, followed by Swanee Edwards, followed by Esperanza Vielma, and also uh, Bob Tenemis. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mr. Jones. Members of the board, I bring greetings to you from my cousin, Steve Moose Jones, who is the founder of Garden City Sanitation, a garbage company that serves many of your areas. Steve and I have been very impressed with how carefully you've paid attention to information presented by both subject area experts and concerned citizens. This is the way government is supposed to work. My company wrote the California fourth grade California history book that hundreds of thousands of kids have used. This is what we tell the kids about how government is, you should work, and I really appreciate you making this true and valid. Now, with regard to consideration of information, in the past week, four important new statements about California water fix have been put forward. At your meeting last week, engineer Deirdre Desjardins presented her analysis showing that the concrete sections of the tunnels will sag and will leak and will likely crack in a significant earthquake. This week, Senator Dianne Feinstein publicly expressed strong misgivings about the tunnel's design. She favors improving surface conveyance. Representative Anna Eshoo sent the board a letter on the 13th expressing deep concern about the cost uncertainties surrounding the project. And senior scientist Don, Dr. John Rosenfield of the Bay Institute just published an article headlined, State's Own Evidence Shows Tunnels Pro Project Will Harm Fish and Refutes Peter Moyle's article because he used a false basis. I trust that the board has given as good consideration to these new points as you have to those in prior presentations and testimonies. I speak for Cousin Steve and the other 100 members of our family in California in asking you to withhold approval of district participation in California Water Fix until you receive satisfactory answers to the many, many questions that have been raised about the project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Appreciate it. Swanee Edwards. Hi, Swanee. Hi to the board. Um, so I was be, wasn't able to be here last week, but I don't have a prepared statement. I'm only representing the mom and pop citizen in a semi-rural area of South Santa Clara County um, that kind of has been overlooked in this whole discussion. I have a few comments. Of, as a good Democrat, we have always supported our unions. However, today I was dismayed to hear a union come out and be incredibly selfish about their need for jobs when it is uh, set next to a huge project like this with an open-ended budget. Um, I think that the union should be pursuing uh, infrastructure repair and, and uh, cleaning up our creeks and, and rivers so the floods don't happen, but, but an open-ended contract for the state to come in to build a project they've never done before, when we've sat for years and listened to the horrible problems of s simply building a bridge over the bay that is still not right, terribly over budget and terribly behind the schedule. I, I foresee this happening with this project as well. And, and the other thing that I fear is tunneling under this delta and somebody going, oops, and, and the whole thing collapsing inward. I, I also really feel strongly about adding more flow and water to the delta for the smelt, for the ecology of that whole delta system, not less. So I think that, that the districts replacing our, our groundwater through recharge is, is one of the out-of-the-box ways that we can save that water in the future without having to take more out of our precious delta. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Next speaker is Esperanza Vielma. Uh, good afternoon. 
and I want to thank the board for allowing me to comment today. My name is Bob Jennings, and I'm here on behalf of the California State Construction Trades Council. We represent over 400,000 hardworking California construction workers and 60,000 apprentices, thousands of whom live and work right here in the San Jose area. Great projects have always come with great controversy. The Hoover Dam, built during the Depression, was originally envisioned in the earliest days of the 1900s, but as with Waterfix, was, was decades in the making. As Fortune Magazine wrote in 1933, the Hoover Dam, originally called Boulder Dam, was a national issue that involved scores of prominent Americans in disputes, political, financial, and technical. These types of disputes should not slow progress any more than it already has. History looks kindly on the vision behind the Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam opened up the West. Without the Hoover Dam, arguably, there would be no Silicon Valley today. The Santa Clara Valley depends on an antiquated dirt levees for water and storage and resources. This is unsustainable. Beyond the explosive population growth that is expected to continue here, proven climate science tells us that the infrastructure we have currently will not be able to provide or store the water that we need as California continues to get hotter and drier. We will no longer be able to count on slow snow melt for water, but we'll need infrastructure that can capture water from quick moving rainstorms. Denying the need for water fixes, denying the science that we all know to be true. On behalf of our membership, who are looking forward to building the water fix, both tunnels, I might add, so as to supply water for the future of this community, I respectfully ask that you vote to approve the water fix, agree to pay your pro rata share of the cost, and Thank support you, Governor Jerry Brown's leadership on this very important issue. Thank you, you very much. Uh, Esperanza, followed by Joan Buchanan, followed by Teresa Hardy, followed by Jeff Dreyer. Good afternoon, and yes, now the real Esperanza Vilma is speaking. Um, good afternoon, board members. I'm standing in for the executive director of Restore the Delta, Barbara Bergen Perea, who could not be here due to a family emergency, but would like to thank all of the supporters for their comments that they have submitted. I would like to enter into record a verbal declaration of the letter that was emailed Monday, October 16th, to all the Santa Clara Valley Water Board members from Restore the Delta. Dear Santa Clara Valley board members, here are some key items for you to consider before you vote on the tunnels. The tunnels misnamed California water fix will not be a fix for the Delta, despite the state and Santa Clara Valley water um, district staff presentations link provided. Kern County Water Agency's own analysis showed in 2033 dollars that the tunnels could cost up to $7 billion. They only approved a 6.5% contribution with a 48.5% majority. This is not exactly a ringing endorsement. And due to our time limitation, I will just end, but the letter has been submitted into record through via email. And we are, well, well, we are very well aware of the pressure that has been brought to this board by the Brown administration, including last week's meeting at Silicon Valley leadership. And as we saw with the MWD board members' appointments to commissions, political futures at stake, and being part of the team. And this created a pro-project atmosphere with which water advocates cannot compete. However, we know that the majority of everyday ratepayers in your district, not the top 1% top of the business leaders and their construction union cohorts, are with us. So to, so to speak, the question is, who do you represent? And do you want to invest in a sustainable water future and be part of the Bay Delta community at large? Or do you want to continue down the path Thank of you, dated big water time. projects that will fail Next the public with continued droughts? Step forward, please. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, as I think you know from prior testimony, represented three of the five Delta counties in the legislature and uh, I'm very familiar with the Delta. I love it and truly believe that the tunnel project will destroy the Delta. But since it's somewhat clear, I'm not sure what, what direction you're going is, I, I do have 
three comments I would like to make. The first is, as I said at the last meeting, the, the plans, the construction plans are 10 percent done. The Bay Bridge project at this time went up 2,500 percent. So if you move forward with this conditional approval, it is my sincere hope, my absolute sincere hope, that you make the final approval dependent on the final analysis of environmental impacts and costs after the plans are complete. Don't write a blank check today. Secondly, given some of the backdoor negotiations that have occurred and continue to occur between the Metropolitan Water District and the State Water Project, we, I strongly recommend that you exercise your rights under the Evergreen Plan, Evergreen Clause, excuse me, on the current state water contract. This clause you exercise by sending a letter, but it ensures that your current entitlements under the same physical conditions, including time, place, amount, rate of delivery, and uh, the same um, chemical quality will accrue to you at no greater cost and that you ensure that any agreement you sign now or later include the same evergreen clause, because you do not want to find yourself at a disadvantage to other communities. And finally, I really resent the fact that we're talking about putting a stent in for the Delta. You know, if, I'm, if I have a clogged artery, I want a stent that actually increases the blood flow to my heart that doesn't bypass it altogether and, and, uh, and kill me. And if you take the water out of the delta, thank you, Mr. At Cannon. The top, the time is up. Appreciate it very much. Next speaker I have is Teresa Hardy. Um, good afternoon. My name is Teresa Hardy, and I am a member of the San Francisco Bay Chapter Water Committee, and I'm also a member of the Berkeley um, League of Women Voters um, Climate Action. I am here speaking for myself individually, but I also represent a very large constituency of residents in the East Bay and also um, in the Delta who are not in favor of supporting the Delta tunnels. Um, there are three major concerns here. One is environmental, public health, and economic concerns, and these have been well addressed. Uh, what I'm here to talk to you about are values. Um, I did attend during the summer the um, board public meetings in Brentfield and in Sacramento, and the room in Brent, Brentwood sorry, was probably two and a half times the size. It was packed with 30, 40 speakers who stood up, fishermen, farmers, grandparents, real estate people, everyone in the community said no. There was a meeting after that in Sacramento, a room about this size, and they had to open up another room twice this size. Those people came from the Delta, and they came in buses, and they had signs this time. And this time, their sign said, disagree, when anyone spoke about something that did not represent the Delta and their interests. We are not here just for Santa Clara. I'm going to read to you a quote from... Um, from Abby Abinetti, who is the first, she is the first tribal woman admitted to the California State Bar, and she served as a state judicial officer for the San Francisco Superior Court for 17 years, and this is what she says. The U.S. views itself as the greatest power on earth, but with great gifts come great responsibilities. These include a willingness to be truthful about our future obligations, but do we value those realities and obligations? If we are to survive and thrive, our laws must reflect and support justice and fairness for all. The Westland, you, Wa Hardy, but your time the is Westland Water District voted seven to one. I'm going to say this. Thank you. Mr. Jeff they Breyer, are the you're state's up, largest district. Mr. Jeff Dreyer, you're up. Next speaker I have after Jeff is Meg Giberson, fell in by Alan Giberson. If you have the same message, we'd appreciate if you'd coordinate your message. And then Sherry Nelson, I believe I have that correct, followed by Mary Robertson. Okay. Good afternoon and thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to address the board. Um, 
with the continuing exploding population growth in both Bay Area and Central Valley, project, projections double population growth in, in a decade alone. Current water distribution system um, pulls salt water from the Delta, in, endangering uh, freshwater ecosystems. This fix will, will help that out. These 50-year-old le levee systems, 100-year-old levee systems in which we depend on, they, we need to fix them. It's a catastrophe wa waiting to happen. We missed 465,000 acre-feet of rainwater of capturing that last, last year for use. This will fix that. Uh, water fixes ensure both safe and abundant water for the population and protects our delicate ecosystem. Basic and simplistic points, we ought to make clear it's not a complex equation. If you do nothing, you'll get nothing. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you, and please support uh, all of our constituents, myself, and thousands of, the, of my family members that live in California. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dreyer. And once again, I'm going to remind the speakers, please, you have two minutes to speak. Please honor the system so that everybody can speak. I appreciate that. Meg Giberson. Mr. Chair, members of the board, my name is Meg Giberson. I'm here to say that California Water Fix is a fantasy project which should be put to rest. Only then should we proceed with its replacement. Watership remains a shapeshifter, a project that seems no more real than it did 10 years ago because so much about it is unknown. Only 5 to 10 percent of the project has been designed so far. 95 to 90 percent of its design has yet to be determined. Yet millions have been spent in its pursuit. Waterfix's legal status as part of the state water project is uncertain. Construction costs are unknowable because of the incomplete design stage. Borrowing costs are unreliable, uncertain amounts of yield, and uncertain cost per acre foot mean nothing about water fixed tunnels can be relied on. An ongoing court action will determine whether it, this is part of state water project. Approving water fix as part of the state water project should not be done by project agencies, either specifically or impliedly. The Delta Reform Act requires reduced reliance on the Delta. Rather than seek to maintain the same level of Delta water, the district should reduce its reliance in accordance with state law. Currently available information demonstrates that water fix is a quagmire, not a solution. California residents are being asked to trust, but there is insufficient data with which to verify. The need for this project cannot be demonstrated because local projects and local water sources will yield more reliable water to make up the projected shortfall at an equal or lesser cost. Water fix cost overruns are to be expected, the costs will soar. The faulty project design jeopardizes the reliability of both project and water. The state auditor's report was very critical of water fix. The design and cost considerations will coalesce in ballooning costs if water fix is allowed to proceed. The better choice will be reliable, drought-proof, climate-resilient local water sources. The conclusion is a 15-year delay in water fix availability is projected, assuming all goes perfectly for the project. And thank you, Ms. Governson. Thank you, in, which Next is unlikely. Next speaker I have is Sherry Nelson. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Alan Guyperson. No, I had Sherry Nelson. Okay, sir. Just uh, a concerned citizen. I urge you to vote no against this costly, unscientific, ill-conceived water fix project. There are far better, less expensive solutions that this water district has the resources to implement. I grew up in Santa Clara County as a fourth generation Bay Arian. Water is important here. I view the ever-changing $16 billion baseline cost as astronomical and unacceptable, which it doesn't include the tens of billions in interest. The uncertainty of the cost makes this project truly objectionable. There are alternate solutions which are less expensive and more reliable. 
the Delta Health is in decline, with a need for fresh water to restore it. According to every scientist I've listened to and read, more fresh water diversion from the Sacramento River for this project further threatens the already endangered Delta smelt. The fish is simply the canary in the coal mines showing an unhealthy Delta, which is also a risk to humans. Healthy marshlands around the Delta are also vital, a vital defense against the coming sea level rise. This project is unsound, unhealthy, and possibly even dangerous. Um, better options exist and need more thought, consideration, and discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. Mr. Allen Giberson, is your message the same as uh, Ms. Giberson? Are you echoing that it message? It is not. Okay, fine. Alan Guyberson, thank you. Um, three brief comments. First of all, thank you for having this long discussion process and hearings. I appreciate the board's efforts and your consideration. Uh, number two, I've submitted a five-page memo both Friday and Monday. Unfortunately, it didn't make it to your packet regarding my concerns regarding this project, which I think is a no-starter. Number three, as a physician, I would object to the cardiac analogy that was presented. The patient comes to me with a bad heart. I don't call the surgeon to get a risky cardiac surgery. I say, stop smoking, follow your diet, exercise, try those things first, and 90% of the time the patient won't need surgery. The same analogy, push your own regional uh, things that broaden your, um, your number of options. Get the local workers here involved rather than some uh, tunnel diggers in Sacramento. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker I have is Mary Robertson, followed by Reverend Lindy Redson, Mary Helen Doherty next, and then Mai Ling Chek. Please line up behind the podium. Good afternoon, board members. First off, I want to thank each of you for your continued time, thoughtful research, and engagement regarding this project. I know it is a very difficult decision weighing on all of you. Um, so with that, I have to ask this board, if you were given the opportunity to personally, blindly invest in a property with numerous cracks around the foundation, holes in the roof, and a few sinkholes nearby, would you do so without knowing the financial implications involved, both short-term and long-term, as well as return on investment? The analogy of the property and the implications are the same for the current California water fix project before you. As noted by the state auditor, the cracks in the foundation are that DWR has not completed either an economic or financial analysis to demonstrate the financial viability. With Westlands voting no and Kern County partially in, how does this possibly pencil out in building? I think they were good for 25% of the project but they're not there anymore at that amount. The analogy of sinkholes on this project are the cost overruns. What are the projected overrun costs? Um, before I came, I looked up what the Bay Bridge ended up being, and in a New York Times article, I found that it was six times the cost projected, not to mention overrun in time and defective materials. What are the ongoing maintenance and operation costs of this project? In light of the fact the district has not received 100% of the swap state water project water, including this past rainy year, does the district even know how much additional water this project will deliver? The answer from Laird of DWR is not good enough, asking that you give a commitment prior to knowing the costs. This is unacceptable when making a personal investment and certainly is unacceptable when investing the taxpayers' money of Santa Clara Valley. I ask you to vote no on the water fix and look and increase our local in, uh, alternatives, which you can be in control of. Thank you, Ms. Thank you very much. Your time. Ms. Reverend Lindy Rapson. Thank you, board members and staff, for the opportunity to speak. I spent about six years of my professional career organizing the religious community in California to support the Human Right to Water Bill. 
The human right to water bill, which was signed into law, has nothing to do with this water fix. If we want to make sure to protect affordability in Santa Clara County, we would do better to help get rid of Prop 218 and make sure that we can have lifeline rates and other kinds of support for local folk. Those who know the Delta best are pleading with the rest of us to say, yes, the Delta is under stress, but the two choices are not nothing or the water fix. The Mercury News describes it as building a 10-lane freeway while saying two lanes will be used. It's hard to believe that that would actually happen. The Delta needs more water, not less. Not only should we care about our neighbors and the health of California fisheries, the uncertainty of climate change and the hydrology that goes with that demands that we continue to do the good work you've already started to rely, more on import, uh, to rely less on imported water and increase investments in local water supply. I was raised to disdain the wasteful water use of Southern California, but I think the Mono Lake decision pushed LA toward change. Now they're ahead of us when it comes to water recycling, stormwater recapture, and demand reduction, as well as adding many local jobs to do the good work. It looks like my time is out, so I ask you to vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Doherty. Uh, good afternoon, members of the board. My name is Mary Helen Doherty. I live in District 2 in downtown San Jose. And it's my sincere hope that your vote this afternoon will be in opposition to the Delta Tunnel's so-called water fix project as currently defined. The unknown and anticipated damaging impacts on the environment and the livelihood of the farm families in the Delta community, as well as the cost to taxpayers that are both known and yet to be defined for this project, call out to you for your no vote. Please listen to those who live and work in the Delta and who know best the place they cherish, who are committed to protecting this place they call home for generations to come. They need to be heard. They are asking for your no vote. In the second editorial in today's Mercury News opposing the water fix project, this guiding principle was quoted in reference to a memo written by board members Estramera, Keegan, and Kremen, and I quote, we will not allow Silicon Valley's values and priorities to be placed at a disadvantage relative to Central Valley agriculture or Southern California. Thank you for that quote. Hopefully, honoring the values and priorities that you hold and those that are being expressed today in opposition to the Delta Tunnels will result in each of you voting no to the water fix project as currently defined. Please. Explore the options at a following meeting that are in your proposed conditional support recommendation today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Doherty. Appreciate your time. Ms. Myling Sheck, followed by Reverend Lindy Ranson. Did we have her speak? My name okay. is Myling Sheck Stephan. I'm a Sunnyvale resident. I urge you not to adopt the proposed resolution for conditional support. As my husband says, the conditions have no teeth. It would be a step forward down a slippery slope. Instead, please vote no for now, with the understanding that further discussion can be made when there are significant new developments, such as financial analysis and governance, structure, governance structure that DWR has refused to release before district votes, or if there's a project revision. In State Auditor has also commented that it is inaccurate of DWR to state that there has been no misuse of federal funds. I guess that is different from state's general fund. A no vote does not mean that there will be no project or that the district cannot be in later. It would send a signal that a higher standard is expected. More scrutiny is needed to reduce the risks of the district's investments. I wish the Silicon Valley leadership group would poll the people I talk with on the street and with my neighbors. My neighbors around, very few people know about water fix. One neighbor who knew lives around the corner and he has written a letter to oppose water fix a long time ago. 
another neighbor has no position because he hasn't spent the time to study the project. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chef. Next speaker is Deidre De Jardines, followed by Josue Garcia, followed by Gary Wesley. Hello, uh, my name is Deirdre Desjardins with California Water Research. Um, I just wanted to say uh, I've been doing independent review of the science and engineering for the project, and I found gross misrepresentations about the project benefits. First, that the project will ensure the resilience of the State Water Project and Central Valley Project diversions in the event of a major earthquake in the Delta. As I informed the board last week, an internal analysis by DWR's engineering showed that the tunnel joints could leak in an earthquake. This fact was never disclosed to the public or to the boards that are voting on the project. And the issue still has not been adequately addressed. This should cause you major uh, concerns. Second, that the project will protect against sea level rise. I testified on sea level rise in the water fix hearing and also cross-examined DWR's engineers. It came out that the project facilities are only being designed for an 18-inch change in water levels in the delta. The assumption was based on an extremely simplistic equation that DWR's own engineers acknowledged was an error. They've promised to reconsider sea level rise in the next engineering revision. Third, that the project will protect critically endangered delta smelt. There are no proposed operations to protect delta smelt. The operations to protect delta smelt will be determined in the future by the Trump administration. This is a failure not only in project engineering, but also in project planning. The goals of the project need to be clear, and the engineering and proposed operations need to address those goals. Thank you, Mr. Jardines. Appreciate you. your time. Mr. Josue Garcia. Uh, good afternoon, Director Barella and directors of the board. Uh, my name is Josue Garcia. I am the CEO for the Building and Construction Trades Council. I represent 26 construction unions in Santa Cruz and San Mendoza counties and uh, a membership of over 35,000 members that live here in Santa Clara County. And out of respect for your time, uh, not everybody's going to speak. I'm going to speak for them. Uh, that's, that's one of my jobs. And uh, you can see a lot of them are here. And I appreciate, and maybe you should too, that a lot of them took time off from their job to be here. The overflow um, section is also packed with uh, a lot of our members. And uh, I say this because um, most people, because we do construction, uh, most people think that we don't drink water, but we also drink water. We also use water. Water is important to us. And the Delta Tunnels, it's good for not only for our daily lives, but uh, for our jobs as well. Uh, believe it or not, we evaluate every project that comes through our uh, office. And we sometimes we say no to projects if they don't make sense for us and if the projects don't make sense for the community. So I'm speaking on behalf of all of our members that live in Santa Clara County and also throughout the state. Uh, let, let me make a parenthesis. I was just appointed to be the vice president for the State Building Place Council. So I'm also speaking for the, the members that live throughout the state on behalf of, of this project. We hope you can approve it. We urge you to approve it. I know there is a, an uncertainty on cost, but even without the tunnels, you cannot predict cost. You cannot, put a, you cannot tell me right now that my water bill is not going to increase even without the tunnels. We know that things are going to increase. And the amount of money that the taxpayers will be paying with the, with the uh, uh, tunnels, it's nothing compared. Like, I, I don't want to say the brand of a, a coffee shop, but you can spend a lot of money just buying a cup Thank of coffee. You, Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Mr. Gary Wellesley, followed by Dave. Hochelle, I hopefully pronounced that correctly, Catherine Mathewson, and John Sanders. In that order, please line up at the podium. 
Gary Wesley from Mountain View. I've handed forward a copy of the editorial and letters and article from today's Mercury News. 17 copies if you haven't seen them. One of the points made in the editorial is that digging projects are notoriously uh, notorious for huge cost overruns. Uh, you might know that uh, the plan of the VTA for BART is that there be a tunnel, that it be underground and that could end up taking up all of the Measure B money that people approve for transportation projects all across the county if they're allowed to switch that money. So uh, I hope you have more material than you've handed out to the public. I know you've had prior meetings on this subject, but I do see, for example, that you have a, a answer from the Department of Water Resources to an audit, but no audit. Uh, and then um, they say we'll get to the economic and financial analysis later. And then I notice in your resolution that you say that the Department of uh, Water Resources certified a final environmental analysis, but I don't see that here. So you really ought to have all the information before you make a decision. And the other thing is that the idea that you might approve a smaller project, uh, maybe one tunnel or perhaps a hose, uh, it is something I would encourage you to consider. Thanks so much. Next speaker I have is Dave Pochelle. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for your long and detailed study of the water fix. I appreciate your effort to consider the best available science and comments from citizens and the environmental community. And I understand the challenge before you to balance the sometimes conflicting goals of the agency while trying to meet the needs of such a booming uh, population. So I urge you to adopt the conditions and guiding principles outlined in the memo by directors Estramera, Keegan, and Kremen. Clearly, they are a result of a lot of reflection on how to resolve the issues with the Delta habitat and Delta water supply with the best interests of the district's residents in mind. Without these conditions, the water fix should not move forward. I support the direction of the board to evaluate many options and pursue the best uh, to ensure low cost access to clean water and a healthy environment. I hope and expect that the conditions on the water fix will further this approach. But I also believe uh, Californians need to have an expanded conversation, um, including the ethics of water allocation. While I think it is vital that California maintain its agriculture, when 80% of California's fresh water is allocated to agriculture, I question the fairness of um, subsidizing water to export, you know, of water to the export of those crops uh, that are re re that require extensive amounts of water to produce. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce Michelle. Appreciate your comment. Uh, Catherine Matheson. Good afternoon. Please vote no on water fix. Our, our county cannot afford it. I am a biologist and landscape architect and the biologist for our county's IPM program. You should have my letter in front of you or on your computer. One way to reduce water by approximately 40% is to stop using chemicals in our landscapes and create healthy soil biology. We are not doing this. Local water uh, taxpayers were not happy at your Las Gavis meeting, and they were not happy because they reduced their water by 50% and you'd increased their water bills by 50, approximately 50%. Instead of supporting the unknown Delta Tunnels costs, support the use of taxpayer money toward local sustainable water projects, which our state does not consider. Repair and maintenance of existing dams, reservoirs, and park perk ponds. Note, they were not full in the largest winter rains since the 1880s last winter. Why? Also, install sustainable curbs and gutters, which will clean the water immediately. Also harvest rainwater and support all new developments uh, to keep the water on site. We could be a national sustainable water leader if we do these. Environmentally, can we trust the state in our county? Our state has given us the third world freeways with garbage everywhere, dying or dead plants, and poor selection of drought plants. 
Also, they removed BARIC, Bay Area Research Extension Center, and promised us another research center, which they didn't give us. They hid the BARIC neighborhood lawsuit, which, was fi which has filed by 160 neighbors because of the multi-household councils in the neighborhood residents. This isn't good. This is not a state that we can trust, and we don't want to continue this. Thank you very much. Mr. John Sanders, Speaker. Next is Luis Hernandez, followed by Al Gonzalez, followed by Gilbert Rivera. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. John Sanders, San Martin. Uh, your CEO earlier this afternoon said that the viability of the current participation approach is unsettled, and for very good reasons. Uh, our experience on recent huge projects proposed in the states have been that they've been significantly underestimated. Our governor said it would cost $1 billion for the new eastern span of the Bay Bridge. It ended up costing over $6 billion. High-speed rail is already over twice his original cost estimate, and they've just started construction. Therefore, it's not unreasonable to assume that the current $17 billion project will become a $50 billion or greater project before it's completed based on his previous accuracy in estimating the costs. Uh, <clears throat> what happens to us, your customers, if the cost doubles or triples? What happens if other water districts do not participate to us, your customers? Uh, what will we end up having to pay as our share of this project? Uh, we encourage you, the Water District, to vote against this project as currently proposed before we're saddled with even more humongous debts. Thank you. Mr. Luis Hernandez. Luis Hernandez, uh, Local 405 and also Book 4, 617 Electricians Union, uh, South Bay Labor Council, and Delegate for the Carpenters Union. Um, I'm going to, I have to leave here because I have a water problem, right? To, uh, it's kind of funny. I have a leak in my driveway, uh, probably as a direct result because my father let uh, one water agency put a 72-inch pipe behind my house. Uh, so I just thought I'd throw that in there so I have to run. But what I wanted to say is, and I'll make it really simple for my brothers and uh, administrators, always forgive, never forget. If you know the past, you see the future. You could do whatever you want in this project. However, I've been around for a long time, attended your meetings. You might know who, who I am because 20 years ago I used to come here and learn a lot with uh, Bob Wallace. Remember him? Okay. So anyway, he's from Saratoga. So what I wanted to say is that uh, this project is important to us, but also I want to tell my brothers everything is going uh Robotics. I, I just worked at uh, Tesla, and I also worked at Apple. So uh, we don't always think alike, but uh, w I really urge you to think about where we're going to put people to work, especially when you're uh, the second largest employer in Santa Clara County, if I'm not mistaken. Am I? I think, well, you are. Okay. Did my research. On that note, uh, uh, I'll say goodbye, and i got to fix my water leak. Bye. Thank you. Mr. Al Gonzalez. Yeah, good afternoon, members of the board. My name is Al Gonzalez, and I'm, I am here on behalf of Local 393 Plumbers and Steamfitters, which represents 2,500 members in Santa Clara County. We have the members and, and residents who live here in Santa Clara County. Plumbers. They protect the health of the nation. These folks here, they protect the health of the nation. And we are in strong support for California's water fix. It will secure water deliveries for the South Bay. 40% of our drinking water travels long distances through dirt levees that are a century old. Water fix will upgrade this infrastructure and protect drinking water for our families and industries. Additionally, water fix will help correct environmental issues in the Delta. We are encouraged the board is looking at a smaller project with a single tunnel, but we think it's vital that we keep every option open. 
We can't risk losing this water supply. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next speaker is Gilbert Rivera, followed by Olivia Navarro, followed by Rita Benton, followed by Jean Bealy. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, hello, my name is Gilbert Rivera, and I'm here on behalf of uh, La Una, Labor's Local 270. Uh, we stand strongly of, uh, of the California Water uh, Fix Project. The Water Fix Plan has been drafted after a decade of expert review, planning, and scientific environmental analysis by leading water experts and engineers. We need a new approach that protects the environment while also ensuring reliable supply to home and business. The Water Fix is the best plan and, and the only viable option for long-term solution for the Delta. We respectfully urge the board to support California Water Fix and encourage members of the board to keep our options open to ensure we get the supply that we need. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Speaker uh, Olivia Navarro. Hello, my name is Olivia Navarro. I'm also here to speak on behalf of the laborers, but I know you only picked one person, so I'm also choosing to speak on behalf of myself and my family. I've been a lifetime Santa Clara County resident and mother of three active environmentalists that um, you know our board Keegan has already met, and our family recycles. We take short showers. We practice the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. It's constantly in our home. However, as efficient as we can be, we must face the reality that it is time to modernize. Our levees are 100 years old. Ask the board to protect our residents' water supply now. We can't wait any longer. We're in the need of a functioning water delivery system that can withstand the impacts of climate change like earthquakes and our recent floods. That I, I volunteered a lot, and unfortunately, we knew what happened with that. I urge you to support the Water Fix program Yes, it does bring jobs, but most importantly, it brings precious resources, our most precious one, which is water for our future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Navarro. Ms. Rita Benton. Hello, thank you. Uh, my name is Rita Benton, and I'm a member of RATES, who, that's Water Rate Advocates for Transparency, Equity, and Sustainability, who represent the customers of San Jose Water Company. Rates has already been in front of you in the past, I'm sure you remember us, um, uh, regarding the staggering water rate increases caused by Santa Clara Valley Water District and the San Jose Water Company. We're already paying some of the highest prices for water in the Bay Area. Our rates have increased 73% in the last three years. I am asking you to please vote no on this water fix. There are so many reasons why this water fix is wrong. And the big problem is cost, cost, and cost, among the other issues that people have brought forward today. Customers of San Jose Water Company are already being charged unsustainable water rates. That's a million customers in Silicon Valley. The customers, or, I'm sorry, the cost of these tunnels will undoubtedly be passed on to the ratepayers, who are already being squeezed. In 19, or excuse me, in 2015 and 2016, the Santa Clara Valley Water District increased its rates by almost 20 percent. And last year, after becoming aware of how the wholesale water rates were being passed on to the ratepayer by Santa Cl by San Jose Water Company, the board agreed to increase its wholesale rates by 7 percent, uh, down from the original uh, proposal of 17 percent. So approving this water fix will once again increase the cost of wholesale water, uh, which we, the rate payers, will be paying for, and these rates are unsustainable. We're hitting, a, we're at a precipice right now. You guys, if we keep increase, increasing the rates at this rate, the, the residents of Silicon Valley will no longer be able to afford water. It's getting that desperate. So I'm asking you to please vote no on this water fix. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Benton. Next speaker is Mr. Gene Bealey. Hello, Mr. Bealey. It's been a while. John's smiling because we've been friends for several decades when I owned the newspaper in Morgan Hill. I, I should add the alternative newspaper so he knows I'm a rebel. Yes, I do. Anyhow, uh, nice. <laughs> I've just returned from uh, attending, I, I attended the Westlands meeting 
covering it for Central Valley Business Times. I was at the Metropolitan meeting, which was extremely interesting to see how much different the information is down there because up here in the north, they don't like to call the tunnels the tunnels. They call them dual conveyance, is the government speak words. Down there, they just call them tunnels. Uh, and now yours. It's a pleasure to have the honor to be with you today. Uh, the reason I came from behind the camera as a videographer for Central Valley Business Times today, after attending all these meetings, what I'm not hearing is the human impact. Everyone talks about the fish and so forth. But my friends are going to lose their businesses and their homes. Why doesn't anyone think about the human element involved? One of my uh, very dear friends, Barbara Daly, lives on a small farm overlooking the Sacramento River at one of the most pristine places on the Sacramento River. She's already gotten a notice that she's subject to eminent domain because this huge water project intakes will be right in front of her home on the Sacramento River. And for that, I want to cry. I'm sorry. Uh, there are many businesses. Well, I'm out of time, but you've got no, the message. You have the red light that will come on. You, have, you okay. still have time. Well, anyhow, there will be many marinas and other businesses will go out of business. Imagine many of I think some of you are probably boaters that love the Delta, and you come over, want to anchor out at your favorite place, like Mildred Lake, which is kind of a pseudo lake, drop anchor, and you find out that's a construction zone. <laughs> Big lights at night and bang, bang, bang every seven seconds. So that's what we think about in Delta. Perfect timing. Thank you. And I hope this Mr. Is Bailey, I'm going to hold you to that tour that you promised me. <laughs> Michael Brodsky, followed by Mary Gill, followed by Pat Kearns. Did I pronounce that right, Michael Brodsky? Right, yeah. Okay. Try to make my way. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to speak. My name is Michael Brodsky. I'm an attorney. I represent a group called Save the California Delta Alliance. We're in Delta interests. We are homeowners and tour boat operators and Delta businesses. We obviously oppose the project because of the way it's going to impact us. That comes as no surprise to you. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. <clears throat> I... Uh, have been uh, studying this project for a number of years and the important descriptions of the project are buried in footnotes and ancillary documents and things that are very very difficult to uncover and understand. I'm sure you're not aware that the intention is for you not to get any of the water that's diverted through the tunnels. That's METS water. The plan is to divide the Clifton Court Four Bay into two halves to segregate the clean, high-quality water that's diverted by the tunnels and for that to go to Met and for your supply to continue to be withdrawn from the South Delta. The board says you're going to move forward in uh, nailing down the details and agreements. That's something that I would look at if I were in your position. Another thing that I would look at in, if I were in your position is the fact that the incidental take permits were denied earlier this summer. That was painted as a victory by the governor, but no incidental take permits for the project, operation of the project, were issued. And the expectation is that you'll invest three, four, five, six billion dollars and be three or four years under construction before you know if you'll get incidental take permits or not, and what conditions will be placed on those permits. Thank you, Mr. Brodsky. I appreciate your comments. How will you explain to your ratepayers after Next you've invested Mr. Mary $5 Gill. billion? Mr. Mary Gill, please step forward. Ms. Mary Gill. Hi, Mary Gill, I think it's really clear from so many of the comments here that there are a lot of unknowns about this project. And not just the cost, but the environmental impacts, the engineering problems. And I'm urging the, the board to vote no. I've heard no, numerous of our uh, federal Congress members speak passionately on this issue. One of them in a small meeting 
actually said he would chain himself to a bulldozer if they start construction. This is a federal congressman. So clearly there are some problems. I'm not an expert on this, but I hope that you will uh, weigh all of this very carefully, and a lot of us are hoping you will vote no. Thank you, Ms. Gill. The next speaker I have is Pat Kearns. And this is the last speaker card that I have. I'm Pat Kearns from Los Gatos, Mr. Speaker and Board. Um, I sarcastically uh, urge you to consider a yes vote. Um, this isn't health care, but when our Congress was looking at health care, they didn't need any of the funds or what it was going, how it was going to impa impact patients or how much it was going to cost the country and the taxpayers. They just forged ahead and didn't wait for the budget office to give them the information. I think you should do the same. I think that's a good idea. You've got to forge ahead. You have to be brave. And I urge this progression based on the 1%. This is going to be a windfall to those of us who invest in bonds. California bonds are just going to be a rich, rich harvest. And for our workers, I think that we have to look at Kern County, who I believe supports this. And Kern County is represented or representing the resident type interests. And these are the people who we can guarantee will be able to get the water that funnels through the Delta so that they can keep their aquifers full for pistachios and almonds while their towns, the workers in their towns, bring bottled water. And they can't get running water because it's in the aquifers and won't be sold to the town. So please, forge ahead, be brave, go without any financial information or the questions that remain, and good luck. Progress in political lives depends not on promises of what will happen in the future, but on getting elected in the next election. Thank you, Mr. Kearns. I want to thank the members of the public that spoke today. Your input is vital to the discussion that your board is about to enter into and also for respecting the process that we asked for early on in the meeting. So now it's our turn. And early on, what uh, early this year, we had appointed three directors, Director Estomera, Director Keegan, and Director Camp Crenum to uh, talk about and give us some ideas as to what this project would look like. So I'm going to start with Mr. Estramera to give us an oversight, an oversight as to what we're going to be looking at here momentarily. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I uh, wanted to take a few minutes uh, for the public to um, catch up with what we're doing. Um, and let me say, uh, first of all, thank all of you for, I don't think there's anyone left here that hasn't addressed us. If so, you can step up and do that now. Uh, but um, let me say, uh, first tell you how wonderful it is to work under this law called the Brown Act, which doesn't allow any of us to speak to more than two, more than two others, about any issue that we haven't made a decision on. So this has been a lot of fun for us to have over 60 public meetings, over a thousand letters, probably 2,000 phone calls, <clears throat> and not be able to talk to more than two of us. It's been a lot of fun. From the beginning, maybe the, at the third or the fourth meeting, uh, and let me say that that's not a joke, that's the law. Uh, from the beginning, I guess by the third or the fourth meeting, I found myself talking a little bit more about these issues and dialoguing with Director Kremen. Then later found myself dialoguing a little bit more with Director Keegan. And thereafter being accosted by our general counsel, who made sure that we understood that, ah, us three have talked to each other. We can talk to no one else on this board. 
So there you have it. Us three have not talked to anybody on this board regarding uh, this make this particular decision uh, at all. And that has happened with the rest of our members. They have not talked to us, nor they have, nor have they talked to more than two people. Uh, and so uh, those of us, those three of us that I mentioned, uh, who have talked legally about this and dialogue, figured that it, it, in order to prevent us from having a 50-hour meeting, we should, we should prepare something in writing to share what our discussions have been and certainly the fact that we don't agree about everything but that there's certain principles that we all kind of buy into. And so we decided that we would put down, down in writing, and that's uh, where you have a memorandum from us three, which was published on Friday. We could have used another couple of days to tell you the truth, to continue to talk about it and draft uh, this memo. But we needed to get it out so that we could have it published and so that people would have an opportunity to read it and see what it is that we're actually going to talk about uh, and and what some of us have expressed in writing. So that's kind of the uh, introduction to the memorandum. And, and I guess uh, Dr. Krem, uh, Director Kremen will, will uh, well, yeah, since we're talking about hearts, Dr. Kremen will uh, review what, what it is and then uh, we can have a discussion with the rest of our colleagues. Finally, we can talk to the rest of our colleagues about it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Yeah, thank you, uh, Director Estemera, for promoting me to doctor. Um, so, so among us three, we put together, we're going to call them guiding principles, but they're really what Director Estemera says our job all the time is, to do policy, not get into the weeds but to get the big picture policy ideas and concepts. And in this case, these are our proposal for binding. You know, no tricks, no staff can change later. This is our proposal that we're asking our fellow board members to support that have the teeth. You know, someone mentioned one of our speakers, well, none of your principals have teeth. We, we think these are the negotiating principles uh, that we'd like our staff to like our staff is directed to go under. And I'm going to start with the seven. They're not really in any particular order. I guess if there was an order, you might say number six, the one that we're actually making the, to the state uh, for our CVP and SWP allocation that we're willing to sign up for is maybe the most important. But uh, from my perspective, number one is our job under the District Act is prim primarily to put Santa Clara County first. Yes, we hear a lot of people from uh, Bethel Island and the rich Delta farmers and their cattle running around that are coming here and their pre-1914 water rights. That's not who we represent. We represent the people, the businesses, the habitat, the environment, and the fish who need the water that live here. So right now the context is we're looking at principally from our perspective. Okay? Um, Number two, you know, someone mentioned, uh, I think it was Dave Rochelle, that, uh, you know, Central Valley Agriculture, Southern California, we're about ourselves. We don't want to give subsidies to them. We're, we think everyone should pay the same fair rate, everyone equal. You know, maybe they finance it differently. But right now, the principle is we're all paying the same. Uh, principle number three um, is that uh, we'd like a flexible approach. Clearly, it's kind of funny. Earlier on, we'd get these letters saying, you're in bed with Westlands. You know, this is a Westlands project. This is a, um, a, a Kern County. Well, you know what? They're not in the project right now, so I don't hear anyone talking about that anymore. So we're clearly not in bed with the Resnicks, nor are we in bed with Westlands. We're about Santa Clara County, and we'd like a project that's sized for the people who come into the project. So um, that's clearly going to be the quote from the governor himself, the quote from other environmental business uh, uh, organizations, and Senator <coughs> Feinstein, a project that fits the needs. We're not exactly sure where it's going to come 
in because people haven't said who wants to commit. We're still waiting for a couple of people to commit, but a project that's appropriately sized, keeping our options open, but it's clearly going to be a smaller project that was uh, then originally proposed. Why? Because there's no users for that. So a project size the users. Number four, I think we heard people talking about Reverend Moore, uh, water is a social justice issue. We agree. The cost of water is a social justice issue. And it's important. Affordability, not just access to water, but affordability. And this project in the bulk that we're talking about is the lowest cost of all the projects. There Vulnerable people, there are people who, and I think we've heard it from some of the rate paying groups, that are being pushed out of their homes and their uh, dwellings because of the cost of water. So it is important for us to lock in our long-term, less expensive water rates. I think we all remember during the droughts the prices we had to pay in the spot market. So if you think of social justice and you don't do a project like this, imagine like we had to do pay $1,500 or $2,000 an acre foot to buy water in a desperate way that we do. So we're trying to lock this in in a long-term manner and make it equitable so um, that uh, we want to be sure the people who use the water, pay for the water, however it's allocated. I think we're going to maybe have more discussions about this when we talk about water rates um, a little bit more um, on guiding principle four and five. Um, and I'm just giving the bigger picture because the, the words control the resolution. And number six, which might be the most important one, is kind of our commitment to what I believe is on the state side. If I could ask our CEO, 15,000 acre feet commitment on the state side and approximately 25,500 acre feet on the federal side of sign up for about 41,000 acre feet commitment uh, because this project right now is just from the state point of view. We also need to keep our federal allocation and part of the principles are to commit to not only the state amount of the project, but the federal amount and any other supplementary water that comes on the market. Maybe someone else isn't interested in their allocation. Number seven, keep negotiating for the best deal for not Bethel Island, but for Santa Clara County and for the people, the businesses, the wildlife, the fish, and the habitat. So those are the big picture general principles. The words control this. And I think we've known how many meetings we've done on it. So I'll be quiet and maybe let Director Keegan amplify on some of the things that I said. Thank you. Thank you, Director Kirk. Director Keegan. Yes.